in this segment, I'm going to go over the basic modify commands, which are uh, very powerful and important as you start learning how to draft an AutoCAD. Once you have a few lines drawn, you'll often see that you need to uh, either copy some of those objects that you already have, um, perhaps trim them, in other words, uh, make them shorter, clean up the corners, etc. So the modify commands are obviously uh, pretty fundamental parts of creating drawings. You'll notice that the modify commands are organized together on a panel on the home ribbon in AutoCAD. Um, but again, I will focus on the shortcuts uh, because if you try to uh, learn those, in the long run, you'll be a more efficient draftsperson. There's several different important modify commands, so this will probably um, be broken up into several segments. For starters, I'm going to go through uh, some of the most basic ones, such as erase, offset, copy and move, and uh, we'll continue from there uh, depending on how the time goes. The erase command is very similar to pressing the delete key, which I did talk about in a previous video. So if you have several objects or one or however many you need to get rid of, you can select them by clicking on them. Or again, you can always do a window across the objects, a crossing window, it's green, or a uh, blue window, which goes from left to right, uh, will also allow you to select objects very easily. And then again, you could press the delete key on the keyboard and that would remove your lines. Or your other option is the erase command. Now the modify commands, most of them allow you to either select the objects first and then start the command, or you can start the command and then select your objects. It's slightly quicker, at least in my opinion, to select your objects first if the command allows you to do that. So I have my line selected and then I'm going to press E for erase and then space and the lines are removed. So again, that was simply select objects, E and space or enter and then the lines are gone. I'm going to press undo in order to make those lines come back. And again, undo is control Z, or you can use the icon in your quick access toolbar at the top. So the next command that is uh, very handy is the offset command. Offset basically gives you a parallel line um, immediately adjacent to one of the other lines that you already have. It's very handy when you want uh, two lines to represent a thickness of something like a wall or a railing post or anything like that. So I drew these lines um, a certain distance along so that I know what type of offset distance I need. So if you're kind of drawing haphazard lengths and then you try to use offset, you might be surprised that your two lines are very close together or very far apart. So you might draw a line that's a certain length, like let's say 20 feet long. That's how long this line is here. And then I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to actually start the command first, uh, but you could select your object first again. Again, you have the option to do either way. So I'm going to do O for offset and then space or enter. Now, in this case, you're not going to select the objects immediately. And that's uh, one reason that I start the command first in, this, in the case of offset. Uh, at the bottom, you can see it says specify offset distance. So it's actually asking you how far apart do you want these two parallel lines to be? So maybe I'm drawing uh, two sides of a wall. So I can say, let's say eight inches and I'll do eight inches and enter. And now the command line says, select object to offset. So it's basically asking which line. So I can choose this line and click on it. And now it says, specify point on side to offset. So it's really asking me, do I want the line to be copied up or down? And then you can click on either above the line or below the line, depending on which way you want to go. You just have to be a little bit careful if your object snaps are turned on and you click somewhere close to the original line, a lot of times it's easy to pick up that object snap and then it basically puts it around top of the same line that you already had. So you can either turn off your O snaps or you want to click well above or well below so that your object snaps don't screw up the process of selecting which side. So I'm just going to click above and now you can see how I have a second line and it's exactly eight inches above the first line. Now, one thing you'll notice about the offset command is that it will stay active. So you have the option to continue offsetting. Or you can select an entirely different line and offset that also, the same eight inches. And then uh, you can you know, offset a whole group of lines very quickly that way. Now, if I res I'm going to hit escape. And then uh, let's say I had to do something else. And then I come back to offset. If I restart my command again, 
you will notice that it will remember your last used distance. So if I want to reuse eight inches, all I need to do is press space or enter to accept the uh, default, which it remembers from the last time I used it. So again, in the pointy brackets is the default response. So if I hit space now, it accepts that again, and then I can continue offsetting without having to retype the same distance over and over. Now, obviously, if you needed to change your offset distance, you'd have to get out of this offset and then start the command over in order to uh, reset your spacing. The next commands I'm going to go over are, uh, I usually teach in a pair because the two commands are very similar, and that's copy and move. The process of the command is basically the same, um, but the difference is whether you have a second version or whether you've moved the original version. So let's say I have this pattern of lines now, and I want to make a copy of that somewhere else. Obviously, this is very common in CAD because you don't want to draw something more than once. You can draw it one time and then make duplicates in order to save yourself a lot of time compared to hand drafting. So I'm going to select my objects again, do, doing this before I start the command. And I just did that with a quick crossing window. And depending on how your shortcuts are set up, if it's default, you'll need to do CO for copy. A lot of people customize their shortcuts and then C would work for copy if that's the case. But um, the way it's installed is CO or CP is your shortcut for copy. So I have my object selected, CO space. Now you can notice at the command line it says specify base point. There's two different ways to think about the uh, copy and move commands. The first way is an, a, an original point or a from point, and then a new point. So let's say I'm copying an object from one room to another room, like in a floor plan. So I can click a base point, I'm going to turn on my O snaps here, of this corner. And now I can click another uh, new point or a second point. As you can see, your command line says specify second point. So I can click here and that'll drop a new version uh, right wherever I placed it. So again, that was select objects, CO space, and then you select a from point or original point, and then you select a second point to place your new copy. The copy command will stay active in the newer versions of CAD, so I can uh, click anywhere else I want another group of the same objects. So now you can see how easy it is to get multiple versions. I'm gonna undo so that I go back to one. Now with the move command, it's really the same idea but you're obviously going to be moving the original rather than making a copy. So you can select your objects and then M for move and space and then your original point or your from point and then your new point. And obviously the whole group got relocated. Now if you didn't select your objects first, and this is true for most commands, um, you can start your command first like move and then now it says select objects so I can choose those. Uh, in order to move on to the next step, you do need to either hit space, enter, or right-click because otherwise AutoCAD allows you to select more objects. So maybe that window wasn't enough to get everything. Now I could select a few more objects or do another window. So when I'm finished selecting, hit space or enter or right-click, and now it's ready for the base point. So you just kind of have to be cognizant of um, whether or not you select the objects means there's either an additional step um, or there's not that additional step if you select the objects first. So pay attention to the command line and that's kind of self-explanatory. Now the second option for how to use copy and move is when you have a specific direction and distance that you want the objects to go. This is also very common because maybe the objects need to be shifted over uh, you know, 30 feet to the right or 40 feet up or something like that. The process is close to the same. I can select objects, CO for copy. Now for the base point, it really doesn't matter if I'm copying a distance and direction. I can click an arbitrary point in space because I'm going to slide my mouse in the direction I want to go and then type in the distance. So I can now type, let's say, 40 feet and enter. And now it's made a new copy, 40 feet located, uh, straight to the right of the original group of lines. So again, select objects, see over copy, and then when you do the base point, you can really click arbitrarily anywhere. The important part is that you slide your mouse in the direction you want to go, being careful with your polar or ortho if needed, 
and then type in the distance you want and you have your new group located uh, exactly where you specified. So the same thing works with move as well. The next command I'm going to talk about is the fillet command. If you've ever heard that term before, you know it's for getting rounded corners. But fillet is also very handy when you want a clean L type corner, like between two lines. And so I kind of move it up in terms of priority because of that. Because it's not that often maybe that you need a rounded corner, but the frequency that you need a, a square clean L corner is very, very often. So uh, it's a really fast way to make that happen. So I'm going to kind of set up a couple example lines there. Okay. So I'm going to do F for fillet, F space, or enter. Now notice at the command line that the radius right now is set to zero. And that's important because that's going to give me a clean L corner, meaning not rounded. If that was something other than zero, I'd have a rounded corner. So now all I need to do in order to get a clean corner is to select the two lines. And it's going to extend or trim or do whatever it needs to do in order to make that corner happen. So I can select, let's say, this line and this line. And you can see how it extended the horizontal one to make it longer, and it trimmed off the vertical one, meaning make it shorter at the same time, and gave me a really clean corner. So it's a very fast way to do that. So I'll hit undo and do that one more time. F space. As long as my radius is zero, I'm ready to go. And then you just select your two lines. You just want to be careful to select the lines on the portions of the lines that you want to keep. In other words, if I was trying to make the L corner at the bottom here like this, and I clicked above the horizontal line, then I'm going to lose the wrong half. So you want to click on you know, the top half or the bottom half of the vertical line, depending on which part you wanted to maintain, and then the other part would be trimmed off. So just keep that in mind. So you can uh, practice that with any pair of lines that you want, as long as they're uh, not parallel. Uh, you can actually fill it parallel lines, but you'll get a, uh, a curved uh, segment. Now, like I said, the fillet command is also great with the rounded corners. So now if I do F space, what if I want a rounded corner? Then I have to change the radius because it's still set to zero, as you can see in the command line. So I'm going to do R for radius because that's my option down there. And now it says specify the fillet radius. So I'm going to say one foot, enter, and then I can select the two lines again. And you can see how it made a very clean rounded corner. Uh, much faster than I could have done with an arc and trying to fiddle with the arc to get it in the right spot. So that's also very handy. So the fillet command will remember the last radius you used. So if I do fill it again, you can see that the radius is still set to one foot. So if I do the radius or the fillet command again, it's going to continue to give me the rounded corners. So if I needed to make that zero again, I would have to do F space and then R for radius space and set that back to zero. And now I could click two more lines if I wanted to make another clean uh, pointed corner. So that's a very handy command.